everyone and welcome to prompt number 70. Uh, I have nothing to say. Here we go. We have pretzels and newspaper. I don't know why, but that sounds like a classic combination. Let's see what we can make. Here we go. Before getting started on any of my ideas, I just wanted to sketch the pretzel and the newspaper as they were as normal pretzel newspaper and ta-da! I had a normal pretzel and newspaper and then I wanted to start thinking of ideas. So the first thing I think of when I think of pretzel is someone selling pretzels at either a city on the streets or like a stand at a game or something. And of course, newspaper you usually buy in the city in the street somewhere. So I thought of having a newspaper stand or just like a newspaper boy selling at the same location as someone who has a pretzel stand. So at first I was thinking about conflict and then my second idea, I just had uh, someone selling newspapers with a kid eating a pretzel looking. Maybe pretzels are poisonous and the kid's sitting there eating a pretzel. So in the end, I decided to go with the conflict one where someone is selling pretzels and someone else is selling newspapers in the same location and they are enemies, I guess, as much as a newspaper boy and a pretzel kid can be enemies. But I wanted to make these characters into animals just because I thought it would be cuter. With the pretzel, I really thought it would be funny if the snake was tied up in a pretzel. I didn't know if I wanted the other character to maybe have wrestled them and tied them into a pretzel, or maybe for their job they just have to be in a pretzel shape instead of wearing like a costume or something, maybe their tails just wound up like a pretzel. Either way, I had no idea, but one thing I definitely wanted to do was make the pretzel snake logo into a snake. So it's a pretzel, but it has a head and a tail at the ends, and I just thought the little logo was so cute, even though it's the smallest. Such a small little detail in this illustration that you probably wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't point it out. <laughs> but either way, to be honest, this illustration just kept getting built and stories just kept getting piled upon it as I worked on it because going into it, it was just going to be a very simple illustration where these two kids were like, darn you, this is where I sell my stuff. And as I started to paint it and get into it later on, I really started to develop more of a story for it. But more on that later. For now, let's talk about the coloring. So as I've said, I have been getting more and more into brighter colors, but to be honest, when I did this piece, I made that snake a sort of brighter green and it just didn't fit. I think the rest of the illustration, I made it a lot not as bright. So the snake just seems super out of place and it seems kind of weird. So that's the only thing that I'm not very happy with this illustration is that that snake is just so green and it just really pops out of the page and it just seems kind of separate from the rest of the illustration. But as far as color goes, I wanted the two characters to have different colors so the snake is green because I'm basic and the little rat character is going to have a lot of red from the clothes to the eye and I did want to tie the two characters in together so the snake does have red eyes and later the logo has some red on it. I gave the little mouse character a very classic look with those clothes from back in the day, just like a little paper boy in the city. And the snake, because it's a snake, it probably wouldn't wear too many clothes or at least there's not a lot that would actually fit on the snake. So I just gave it a very simple bandana that I could wear for its, I guess, work uniform. It just has the logo on it and it's very simple, but I thought it was kind of cute. And of course the snake is holding a pretzel because the prompt is pretzels and there's two more pretzels in the background. So I jumped into this illustration pretty excited and I really wanted to give it a lot of detail in the background. I wanted there to be a lot of characters. I wanted a lot of people to be watching what is happening. I wanted there to be just stuff going on as it is a city. But I think I have this problem where I just jump into an illustration and just forget about all the details and just end up focusing on the main characters. So I jumped in and after I had painted the background, I was just like, ah, I wanted to put like a crowd of people watching and now I can't even put a crowd of people watching. I guess I could have made them into like a black mass of a crowd or something. But as I work on the illustration, I wanted to put more little details into the background because as I painted the characters, I wanted to give the snake sort of a little part on its face where it looks like the mouse had scratched it or like punched it or something. And I also thought, well, if the snake is going to have been punched, then surely the mouse is going to be a little bit dirty or something. Maybe, maybe the mouse fell. And then after I put a little bit of dirt on the mouse, I just kept putting dirt on the mouse and I thought, well, you know what? It's gotta be a dirty little poor mouse now. 
Now the mouse is just this dirty little poor creature that's just trying to make a couple of bucks by selling some newspapers. And the snake is going to be really clean because maybe the snake is from a richer part and he's only working because his family is making him or something. I don't know. There's probably an episode where he has to learn a lesson and his family is making him pretend he's a poor person to have a job. Oh no, he has to make his money. He can't just get it from his parents. Anyways, so I really had a lot of fun putting the dirt and stuff onto the mouse because as you guys know, I love putting little dirty spots and blood splatters and stuff. And really, it just put so much more detail into this illustration. It just gave the mouse so much more character. And it really just helped me create more of a story for this illustration, which I didn't really expect. Just like the cat fishing in space illustration, I really started to develop this story and just really develop this illustration as I worked on it. And things started happening that I didn't plan. And I've been really enjoying that about these illustrations. I go in with a a very simple plan and then as I work on it I get ideas and add stuff and accidents happen and next thing you know you have a dirty mouse. But it's still cute. So I didn't stop with the poor mouse character being dirty. I also wanted to make the streets look a lot different. But like I said I already colored them and I already did the line art so there wasn't too much I could do. So I did what I could and made sure that I made the streets and everything very dirty. I splattered dirt all over the streets, all over the sidewalks, all over the building in the background, the little stand of papers on the side. I just made it look as grungy and dirty as I could and I left the side that the snake is on all clean. I didn't add anything else to it. I just made sure it looked very clean compared to the side that the mouse was on and I think that really worked as far as trying to make the two environments look a lot different. Although it doesn't really make a lot of sense that just right across the street it would be so much dirtier. But I didn't want to draw too much attention from the characters. I think it works and I thought of a good excuse for why there are no crowds or no other people on the streets. Are you ready for this excuse? It's because there is such rivalry between those two families that everyone on the streets skedaddled because there's gonna be a fight and the parents are gonna come out and they're probably gonna have guns or something. So everyone got scared because they don't want to get involved. And ta-da, that's why there's nobody on the streets. Good job, me. I did it again. So like I said, I'm just really surprised and happy with the outcome of this illustration and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this video and as usual, I will see you in the end card. There were so many different interpretations of the prompts mirror and microphone and I especially love the one that used mirror as a verb. That was really clever and I especially love the prompt entries that really make me think about what I'm looking at because that means you were so creative that I had to really look for it. So thank you to everyone who joined in but let's talk about the two featured arts. The first one is by Elidus Art Account who did this really beautiful piece of this girl standing in front of a mirror and to be honest I just really loved the colors on this one. They're just very bright and colorful and I just I really liked it. And by Lunar Rover, I loved this piece. It's just very simple, but very effective. I love the little ghost buddies in the mirror looking at the girl that has the candles all around and she's looking for spirits. It's really cute. And I really like the colors in this one as well. Okay, I can't wait to see what you guys do with this prompt and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.